Hello everyone, Code Queen Ayeli. If this is your first time watching, get ready to learn some Wix code. This video will show you how to remove drop down duplicates and how to trigger conditional filtering based on the selection of the first drop down. It will also teach you how to connect your drop down elements without using data sets. Regardless if this is your first time or 10th time using Wix code, this video is for you. Click the subscribe button to stay updated with new tutorial uploads. Check out other Wix code snippets on totallycodable.com and please join the Totally Codable Wix code group on Facebook. Before we get started, click on the video description down below to find the link to this tutorial site so you can follow along. Be sure to watch the video till the very end for some troubleshooting tips, just in case. Ready to begin? Let's get started. Once you land on the tutorial site, you will see three examples of different drop-down elements. Let's look at the first example. There are three drop-down elements with conditional filtering, meaning drop-down 2 and 3 will auto-populate based on the selection made from the previous dropdown. If I click on Adventure, this will trigger the next dropdown to Enable. If I click on the Next option, it'll trigger the last dropdown to Enable, allowing me to select only the options that are filtered for that specific category. These two dropdowns are disabled on Ready from the Properties panel. If you are using dropdowns to collect information in a form, this code builds the options without duplicates and with the conditional formatting. Let's look at the example database collection first. The example database for the first example is called category. This collection has three different columns. The first two have multiple matches. The code that we add to the page will remove all of these duplicates for both of the columns. Now let's look at the code to see how this collection gets filtered as each dropdown element is changed. On the tutorial site, click on code at the top of the menu. This is the first code. It basically says, on ready, a function will happen. This function that is found here will actually perform a query to find all of the unique options for the first dropdown. It searches under a single field key. The field key is found in your database. Click on Manage Properties and you get the field key. This field key matches the column that you want to search and filter. Then it'll find all of the unique titles. It'll create the options list and insert and create the options for that specific dropdown. This first function happens on ready because we need the first dropdown list to be populated when the page loads. Do you remember when I said that the second and third dropdown were disabled on Ready through the Properties panel? Well, if you right-click on one of these dropdowns and select View Properties, you'll notice that I deselected Enabled by default. This causes them to be disabled when the page loads. Back to the code. When you continue down, the second piece of code is actually an export function which it says genre change. The first drop down button on change will do something. In this case, it'll enable the second function for the second drop down following the same pattern, performing a query on a database for a single field key inside of that first drop down element. Then, finding all of the unique titles building options for the second dropdown 
using a different field key for that option. It also enables the second dropdown. So as soon as they click on the first one, the second one will turn on. The code continues and it repeats the exact same thing. When the second dropdown changes, it triggers the third dropdown function, which is here, and it enables the third dropdown button. Let's move on to example two. There are two dropdown elements with conditional filtering, just like the first example. The second dropdown is disabled, so it prevents the user from selecting this. It forces them to choose a selection from the first dropdown because it'll trigger the filtering for the second one. Once they select it, the second dropdown is enabled and they're able to select their choice. Let's look at the database collection for this example to see how it retrieves its options. Inside of the editor, these dropdowns are connected to the database collection called location. If you notice, it only has two columns. This column actually represents the first dropdown, and the second column represents the second dropdown. There are many duplicates in this first column, but the code that we will be using will remove all the duplicates, just like in the first example. Let's take a look at that code. If you scroll down the code page, you'll see the second code. This one basically says almost the same thing. On ready, it'll perform the function called unique dropdown one, which basically means this function will do the same thing. It'll perform a query on a database, which we already said in this example is called location. Then it's going to find all of the unique titles for a specific column, which we will use the field key to tell the code which column to check. In this case, the column will be state. Then it'll build all of the unique titles, create a list, and add that list as the options for that specific dropdown. In this case, it'll be the first dropdown element. Then when it changes, that first dropdown element will trigger the second dropdown function. And at the same time, it will enable the second dropdown element, allowing the person to view the options and select their choice. Finally, let's look at the third example. In this one, there are two dropdown elements with conditional filtering, but each dropdown element is connected to a different data set, which are actually also connected to two different database collections. Let's look at those collections inside of the editor. This first dropdown is connected to this data set. It's called the list of states. The list of states is actually a collection that was created as an index, just to have a list in the form of a database collection. This collection is called states. When you click on states, you will see a small list just to use as a reference or an index for the filtering purposes of the code. So it has the four different states here. These four different states match the second collection that is used for the second dropdown element, which is the city. The city is connected to this data set, and this data set is connected to the location database collection, because in the location database collection is where all of the cities are listed, but also being referenced by state. These states match the index. So when this index matches one of these states, these two collections will filter each other so that way the correct city is displayed on the drop-down element. Now with this second example, we will use only a little bit of code to tell it what to do. Let's take a look at that code.
Continue scrolling down towards the bottom. And in the very last piece of code for the two drop downs, there is no on ready code, but there is an export function. When the first drop down element changes, so you've triggered an on change event for that element, it triggers a filter code. This function is called the location city filter. Here, it first enables the second drop down element and then it begins to filter that data set that is connected to the second drop down element. It will search for a field key, which in this case will be the state, because the state column is the one column that both collections have in common, and that state is actually listed on the first drop down element. And that's it. That's the code for the last example. Now that you learned what each example does and what the code says, go back and study the different drop down combinations. Select the right combination for you, and then go through the code and start changing out the pieces of code that are in color. The unique drop down one function, this is a made up word. You can label it whatever you want. The collection is the name of your database collection. The drop down name one is the name of your first drop down. And the field key is the field key that we found in the database collection. Go through the code, swap out these, and inside the editor, make sure that you trigger every single drop down that triggers one of those codes. So you right click, view properties, click on on change, click enter, and this is the name that you will be using for your code located here under the function. Now for some troubleshooting tips. If you still don't see your options in your dropdown, make sure to check your database permissions. Click on the database, edit permissions. Check to see if anyone can read or if you have set it to site member only. If yes, then don't forget to sign in so you can test it. Otherwise, you won't be seeing any options in your dropdown. Also, have you synced your database? Click on a collection, click on the word sync, and send all items to live. Make sure that you save and publish your site as well. If the filtering is still not working, go back and check for misspelled words. Check to make sure that your element IDs or the hashtag names are written correctly. If you have the wrong one, the code will not work. Also, check that the field keys are spelled correctly and that you've written the correct one. Even if you miss one letter, it will break the code. Check that the name of your database collection is correct and that there are no letters missing. Every capital and lowercase letter count. Check that each function that is triggered by a change has that specific event triggered on that element. If it's an on change event, make sure that there's an on change code here. If you still need help, please join the Totally Codable Wix Code Facebook group. Go ahead and feel free to post screenshots and your questions. There are a lot of Wix users and Wix code experts that are ready to help. You can also check out totallycodable.com to find help from other expert coders or designers like myself. I hope you subscribed and gave this video a thumbs up. See you again soon. Bye.